Hey, hey, yes, yes, what's popular YouTube? Another day, another demo, and we are getting closer now to the top 10, but we run into a challenge. And that challenge is that at this time last year, we were also three days away from HLTV dropping the list officially on their uh on their on their on their on their website which is a big problem a huge problem i'm gonna go ahead and check the date i believe it was right on january 1st when the 2019 list of players came out of course it did come out backwards but i think that it came out in a group and i'm not sure how many extra days that we have i could probably check that but it's going to be something like I think it comes out five and then five and then one, 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 all the way down for the top 10. So we might have a couple extra days, but either way, we're not going to get through all 20. I'm not really looking forward to predicting past the top 10. I think, uh, you know, I've got a top 10 that I've looked at 1 million times to try to figure out where HLTV will come from with their predictions. But man, it's hard. Like it is a tough year. Um, I actually kind of want to run this by you. So uh, before we before we talk about who is actually uh, my prediction for the HLTV top 20, number seven for 2020, and that is where do the NA players fit into the picture? Because the real interesting challenge of this year, of course, for those of you who missed it, is that in the first half of the year up until about September, November, I saw September, October before the blast, fall finals or the sorry the blast fall series none of the na players had come over but you had furia winning everything you had eg being very very consistent and then furia eventually taking the edge over them and liquid having very average results in north america even and then when they came over to europe uh eg got knocked out really quickly in blast fall final flew back ran into covid complications couldn't come back to europe so their run was cut short um I really think that they would have appreciated in in skill as they stayed and got to boot camp if they did. So, you know, I'm not going to hold that against them too much. But then we look at teams like uh, Furia, who, you know, Yuri, he comes over here and he continues on as if it was still North America versus way better teams. His stats stayed up. He was consistent, even though when they didn't place well or when they did, he was a reason why they placed well. And wasn't the reason that they didn't place well. He, he he was super. And so was Elise. He had another great year. He was number four last year. He did, uh, honestly, extraordinary work. Let me go ahead and dra drag these into a different tab so we can just take a look at these um, before we look at the next players. But, like, like check this out, right? Like, uh, we've got, you know, think about the challenge, right? Of It's a great excuse to be like, okay, you spend over half the year in North America playing against triumph playing against chaos playing against a weak liquid playing against eg is your only primary level of competition that'll get you anywhere close to the european teams uh and then you end up going to europe you have a few days to get uh, acclimated and like you can start off this well i mean they came 10th 10 to 12th here after and after five maps yuri had the 1.15 everyone else was terrible this is a horrible event to watch it looked like fury we're not going to go anywhere then the showdown rolled around and they just owned and a huge reason was because of yuri and again this is it's just so impressive isn't it like it's a different level of uh of achievement and it also helps counterbalance the fact that like they had no choice but to play against these teams right like we can't ob can't obviously weigh these events that highly even though they won everything um but that helps now that they're in europe and then we have yuri performing really well and they did really freaking well in north america right even to find consistency in that region was pretty cool. So I, I really don't know. I mean, I feel like, you know, Yuri is one of the best players of the year for me, but I don't know where to place him. And Elise, the argument is not quite as good because a deep, like they lost to, you know, Furia nine out of 10 times <coughs> in the first portion of the year. And they didn't have too many deep runs. I thought like EG were a problem for them. Um, and so were Furia. And then when they came over to Europe, they have one big result here. It's the best result. It's the end one. And Elysia does incredibly well. Like he, if you, if you watched it, he clearly was like 2019 Elysia here at finally. But, you know, this is the end. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, where do they fit? I feel like in terms of if I just think about them in my list of like, 
okay, but who is the, who do I feel is truly like, you know, apart, apart from the, so here's the problem, right? You have to, I have to think like, okay, uh, it has to be, the list has to reflect both what's obvious. Was this clear player clearly a top 20 player? Do you know what I mean? Like we watch CS, we know the game, we look. If you ask the player, they'll say we, they feel like a top 20 player. We look at the player, they look like a top 20 player. The stats don't always reflect that for different reasons. Sometimes your team's not good enough and, and your system or your role is holding you back or the the brackets that you got were particularly hard. That matters. You know, maybe you were stuck in NA, you had bad practice. Like there's a lot of things that are outside of, is that player actually a top 20 player this year in this kind of like, in this form, however you want to describe it. Um, but like, is it has these different kinds of roadblocks uh, and did we see glimpses of it, right? So it's a it's a really interesting question. I don't know where to place um, uh, Yuri and and uh, and Elise just yet, but uh, you know I'm I'm honestly thinking like is there a place for Yuri and Elise, you know, in or around top ten? And right now I think I've got the three next players. You know, if we throw in them in the mix, let's say you know if next five next players, six or seven next players. I have like probably like six or seven of the next players uh sorted with just small things and to keep looking back on them and, and trying to figure out like where where they might be placed but i also have to kind of try to figure out where i think that um uh, uh hltv will place them of course because that's what this list is um so okay so who is who is finally our number seven player uh in in this list where we started out s simple with a slight edge and honestly man I was 55% confident on simple and I'm looking at, at more and more stats and I, <coughs> you know, because the amount of not necessarily just because they won more, but because there was deeper runs. So there's more maps to weigh down on the stats and still very, very consistent placing. I'm starting to wonder if Siwoo could actually be in that number one spot, in HLTV back to back years, rookie year and next year consecutive. I don't know. I'm starting to be less and less confident about, uh, predicting simple. The two, the three through whatever through six so far, that I'm not planning on moving. I haven't wavered in terms of um, my predictions there, but the Zewu simple one that's still a kind of a, not exactly sure, honestly. And uh, you know, this this is just for fun. So I'm I'm so I, I'm really curious what you guys think um, about about that. Not just about the top two, but about anybody else. Um, some people said that blame F was a little overrated yesterday and I can, I get it when the game doesn't go well and it feels like <clears throat> his teammate dies, his teammates die, then his style, you know, it looks like he's baiting and that's the same thing for Rops and anybody else who has a very hard lurk role, which is an antiquated position in CS. Um, but when it looks good, it looks great. And the demo we watched yesterday, I thought it was a fantastic demo, the blame F demo, because it showed that he actually got a high percentage of opening kills. He had critical impact kills in the middle of the round he was clearly causing disturbances for the ct side in trying to find him and what's cool about today's demo is we're going to look at a, a, a player who will challenge blame f okay Ooh, a segue that will in this role on the t side for blame f on nuke will maybe be the reason that the other team can succeed in their half on their ct side okay unlike with vitality where they're unable to figure out how to kill blame f or where he was or if he was there maybe in this demo we'll see a player who could find blame f who would be in a position to suss him out to maybe win duels over him and is the reason that they're able to be complexity on their ct side of new can you think about who i'm talking about i'm sure some of you may have had an idea at this point we've definitely watched this guy play this position before um we know he's very very good at it he's been he's a consistently top placing rifler in the world he is a right hand man some would say uh who you know people had questions about his consistency coming into the year uh but i think overall has had a number of really really strong events and with the this placing and with the next placing I had a lot of trouble uh, figuring out who was going to have the edge between him and the next placing and the next one after that. But this guy in, so uh, this guy is the, is the one who, who had my attention. Do we know who this player is? That's right. It's Godtronic, right? This guy, he has come through into the year and 
But first, we kick it off with just a, you know, first through third at, at Blast Premier Spring Series. And it's a weak event for uh, electronic overall, but it's still a positive event. And then we have the Katowice win, which is pretty enormous. And of course, we're looking at mainly 95% quality events here. We do have the Gamers Without Borders. We play Clutch Island events where it's not the ultimate you know pinnacle of cs with the level of competition and then we also have missing a couple of very important events like um that you know for one reason or another they didn't need to play in like we had the uh we had the it was a dream hack open fall that was the rmr event that happened last minute i don't know if i guess navi didn't need the points or something like that but they didn't even attend that was a really stacked event that heroic won over astralis in the finals um, we do have a couple of marks on the record, um, ESL one Cologne Europe, where they pretty much lose out. It is a tough event and he, he, he doesn't play very, very well here, but, um, and also, uh, blast, blast Premier fall series, which was something. And then they ended up skipping out, but again, it's because they had enough points that they just come through to the fall final. Um, I believe is yeah, why they didn't have to go to the showdown and, this is a very strong event and a very, very strong end statistically. And overall, it was the it came down to the head to head, okay, between this player and who's up next. And I had it flipped for a while when we were looking I was looking at this and I was like, oh man, I feel like I've gotta give it up to this player. And I wanna know if you know who that might be. But when I kept when I kept when I looked very, very close into the head to head, I was thinking, this is tough. Some of the most important events we are seeing him have really, really strong runs at the Pro League with the second place finish here um, and a super standout performance. Same with DreamHack Masters Spring, which is a fully stacked event. And uh, of course, you know, the strong finish as well as the, the Premier Fall Final. So it's a bit top heavy in terms of which events he did play well in. Um, and some might be have been more consistent and even throughout others. But yeah, that's what tipped the scales for me. Electronic. Um, what do we know about this guy? I mean, he had a, has had a very consistent uh, career so far. If he's not playing well, Navi aren't winning. That's that's another thing. It's like uh, coming closer to getting MVP at the events is another thing. Like just to show how much impact that they have. This is something that uh, HLTV referenced a lot in their articles from last year. So, so that's something I try to focus on a little bit is, you know, was it actually m meaningful if a player played well or not? And that could be a bad thing for the team or not, but, you know, was it a make or break situation? And it almost always was with um, Electronic. He's just so key. And he plays a lot of important positions. And just as an aside, I've heard from Flamey that Electronic is his, he says it's the best teammate he's ever played with, has great communication and always has good ideas for where he thinks um, the opponents are going to be and stuff. So this is somebody who has high praise. We know he's good. Um, great movement, great rifler, apparently great dude, great father. So yeah, electronic, I think is who I'm picking to be in the, um, number seven position. Uh, things are very, very tenuous up in this, you know, in this top 10 region. And, uh, <clears throat> yes, there's a couple of names that I know, like people are thinking of right now that we haven't seen just yet. And there are names that are, you know, they're accounted for. Um, but I'm, I'm going, you know, I'm going over stats with a, an emphasis on important events with an emphasis on high, um, you know, a high, a high skill floor. So like very consistent as well as, um, big match players, as well as just like, you know, were they part of the important wins, even if there weren't that many for a lot of the teams. Um, and yeah, I like like this stuff like this is really really important right 1.17 he has a higher rating versus top five opponents um than he does versus other teams that's like i mean if that's not proof that you're a good player i don't know what is right that, that's, that's actually pretty um a pretty marvelous stat line for him so the match that we're going to look at of course is electronic versus complexity versus the juggernaut on nuke and the game I actually don't remember which game it was. It was um, electronic. Let's go ahead and, and sort for nuke. So I wanted to pick a, you know, a position that we know a lot about. I actually really wanted to look at a T side because I thought Blame Maps T side was so cool. But I think of what I'm going to do with the demos now is I'm going to try to connect them in some way, at least in pairs. So we'll have like a, 
you know, a T side and then a CT side versus that player, or we have a uh, two T sides in a row in the same position. So like every day you can, we can, we can do a comparison because a lot of people ask for like old versus new, like electronic, you know, from 2016 versus electronic now, that kind of thing. I think it would also be cool to have like comparisons from just, you know, two different ways to play a map. Then you can really see for yourself what the discrepancies are in the play style. So when you're watching, you can, you can, um, you can actually just, you can see for yourself without me saying anything like this is, oh, this is, you know, this is the way he's holding angles today, or this is a different way that someone's holding them, playing the map in a similar way, but not exactly the same. I think it's a great way to watch demos. So I'm going to try to do that, connect the demos in some way at least in pairs or something like that. We had a five, four resolution. I didn't have, I didn't, I didn't have, I didn't have this set up. I put in all of this other, everything else, but I used 10, uh, a 1280 by 960. So, you know, we're going to see a little bit less <laughs> than he sees on his screen. I'm not sure why this is his favorite resolution. Maybe there are some other people who play, um, on this resolution. We have switched HL TV over to dark mode, but we haven't switched CSGO pro settings over to dark mode. Um, and now we're going to hop into the game. So yeah, uh, um, I think this has been super fun so far. I want to say thanks to everyone for, um, for watching the videos, joining us on this journey. I think it's been very, very, very interesting and fun to watch. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I'm really enjoying this. And there's a lot of stuff that I want to do after the HLTV top 20 videos. Haven't decided how we're going to uh, like sort through the rest and try to get the videos up before HLTV does. But, um, okay. Now we're, we're already well into this demo and we're seeing some pretty cool kills here from electronic holding his nerve on these very, very tight angles and looking for one last fight inside of the mini. He won't get the kill, but his teammate does. Oop. see volume oh <clears throat> okay so mini why is mini so important and why is it so hard well number one mini deals with this is a perfect example he's watching outside in this position and he's also fighting squeaky <coughs> sorry my voice feels so like it feels like i'm gonna lose my voice really quickly today for some reason um i'll be careful with it squeaky and outside at the same time he's splitting his attention between both of them he has to watch his back that's why your aim has to be very good you're gonna get a lot of kills there's players who can jump on top of you from top of mini cross red you have to communicate with your outside guy for when they need to help you versus when they need to help ramp that's simple he has to make sure they don't vent drop right by spraying down it's a big responsibility he can get sprayed through the hut through squeaky and then have someone uh, drop on him from mini so it's a very very hard position to play and it's a very impactful position right we talk about impact in these games and stuff it's a very impactful position for if you play it well or if you don't play it well so oh the game froze hopefully that's not a that was weird. Actually, when I first started up the demo, okay, we're back. That was a little bit scary, but we're back. When I first started up the demo, okay. So, all right, we're looking at an interesting rotation here. He's actually into credit card and he's not seeing anybody rotate around. So now he's looking for the lurk to see if eh, blame F or anybody else tries to walk through. And you can see the else or the diagonal smokes here. This is actually something interesting as well. So, you know, I, I even talked to a, a pro player about coming on and explaining uh, to me why people are throwing certain different kinds of new smokes and stuff on nuke and uh, trying to explain something like the different kinds, the meta evolution of, of banana on Inferno. Cause I think that'd be a very interesting topic. And I'd like to get someone like, um, you know, Stiko or, or something like that to come on and, and talk about it. Even though, you know, Stiko might not play banana. It would be a cool, maybe you could do outside on nuke. We get another pro player for something else. <clears throat> I feel like uh, my throat is like a little bit scratchy. I'm scared. Um, but these, I'm starting to, we're watching so many demos and I'm starting to see all of the different ways that pro like pros are using these new smokes because um, th these, these cross smokes that cut like diagonally are somewhat new, at least probably the newest variation that people are using. And you can see how poofy the smoke is into mini. 
So that means that anybody who's on sitting, like if Blame F goes to the outside of left, left side of Mini, he can walk in through the smoke and we can just see right now from electronics perspective that it's poofy enough that they, he can't see them turn the corner inside Mini. So that puts a lot of stress on electronic if he's playing outside and a lot of stress on his upstairs players who have to watch for lurks. So like even in this spot, there is a world where someone could have crossed into the corner of Mini. They would be able to be spotted from heaven, so a little dangerous, but could have. So we'll see, and, and the lurks walking through the smokes are very common. We saw how much Blame F was using it yesterday. And, oh, this is a game with NATO Staffix. Wow. Um, yeah, the, unfortunately for complexity, their year was rived with a lot of stand-in matches, losing Oboe, um, losing Poison at the end. Really sucks for them. <coughs> We're going to go for the control clear. I've had no problems outside except for just, you know, electronics like waiting there. Uh, but it was a ramp hit the whole time. He didn't have, the, he didn't hear anything when they crossed secret. He didn't have to fight anyone inside a mini. And now we've got one in the dark. And that duel is one, but there's still another player left up. I think we hear him over control side. Or is there two? Oh, there's two, excuse me. And there's no way that he can win that. Okay. So we're out. We're at the CZ. I'm going to skip through this. Okay, he gets killed by Blame F. And then let's take it to the next round and see uh, what happens now that we play mini again. Oh, wait, we're on pistol again. Oops, that sucks. Let me just get some water. <clears throat> Bomb has been some people are asking about Someone actually um, emailed me and made an edit of one of these videos and did a really good job of, of creating like subtle jump cuts to cut out, you know, all of the parts that are just, you know, it was either a, a pointless round or there wasn't really a lot to talk about or <clears throat> dead parts of the, of the video and just tried to make it, um, the videos a little bit more short and concise. And it did a great job, but because they're uploading every single day, there's really no way for me to keep the frequency this high and also put through the edits. And okay, that's the lurk caught, which is pretty fantastic. The key kill. And here's a round where, you know, Blame F could come through and save the day, but he, he does also need his teammates to get entries to really help his lurk be effective. <clears throat> Okay, we've got the uh, grenade in outside. And I think we have players top of mini. Okay, so let's see how he responds to this. Oh my god, that's actually... Oh my god, he almost... He, that's so cool from Electronic. The way that he like reads that exact situation. I mean, that's one of those spots that shows you he's not playing off of reactions. That's really awesome. I mean, he didn't get the kills. They jumped like right by him, but he... He set himself up like for the best possible. Oh my god, he actually he pulls it off this time around. They drop through in the same spot. He gets into um, a better position more quickly. No flashes and he gets the 2k mow down. Damn near did it, uh, uh, almost did it blind. And you give him vision and he, he comes up with both kills. That's uh, pretty nut stuff by Electronic. You know, mini shut down 5v3, like this is a farce for complexity, right? They're kind of pretending they're playing. They're looking for a giant mistake from Navi. And okay, well, NATO does get one. And I don't know where he is. It looks like some action is going down. It is upstairs, okay. All right, well, we're into the 2v2. After alert kill from NATO. One on the back of the site dead, and he gets both looking super sharp here. He just doesn't lose many duels. But yeah, you know, a demo a day. A demo a day is the frequency I'm trying to keep, and I want to. And, um, <clears throat> and yeah. I'm trying to make all of the editing happen live. That's why we're playing the intro, and then I'm just hitting record on OBS. And uh, yeah, just try to make improvements every day.
to get the show tighter and tighter. And of course, you know, how would we be able to keep up with the HLTV top 20? If we weren't uploading every single day, we'd be so behind. Nice work here by Boomich. Never tell you about the time, I think it was in Moscow and I saw Boomich and uh, it might've been like Blast, uh, Blast Moscow and Boomich was in the lobby and um, Boomich is like such a happy guy. Like he's actually such a, like you can just tell he's such a sweetheart and everybody loves him. And he's like always smiling or singing. And I'm sure you've heard him sing. He's actually quite a talented singer. Um, but it was so funny to see, I was in the lobby of this, it was like a five star hotel in Russia. It was really nice. And these two kids ran up to Boomich and said, Boomich, Boomich, and slapped him on the stomach and then asked him for a picture. And uh, it was the most, uh, might have been the most adorable thing I've ever seen. Because of Boomich's smile. Uh, because the, the children are so happy. It was great. All right. Oh, electronic. Did I hear one crossing? Oh, what? Oh, Convig was there just to kill him. That was his only job. Oh, but they're going to need two for the job. They might even need three. They might even need four. They might even need four people for the job. He gets all three outside. I think one might have crossed. No. Nobody else is up. Yeah, this is the kind of thing you can't really teach, right? This is the kind of, this is the part of Counter-Strike. You know, to teach someone to be aware, to know how to stand in the different positions, to multi-frag this way. This is the kind of thing you cannot teach that, you know, you don't want to just teach someone how to be an outside player, but like, this is how you section out these fights and always, <laughs> and always have so much impact. What the hell is he doing? Are we throwing? Are they, are they smoking out the back of Big Garage? Why is he throwing that Molotov down? <clears throat> I don't. I don't remember complexity smoking out the back of Big Garage, but he keeps <laughs> throwing that Molly down. What was that pirouette? Did you see? <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Nice silent Ven drop. Touches the ladder at the bottom, of course. And being dynamic, finding a new way to play outside. So this time via secret. This is where you have to make the call again. You know, how do I keep it fresh? And he's waiting for all kinds of pushes outside. Let's see, he's clearing angles. Pay close attention to this, right? This stuff is very important. Then the way he closes, clears angles, it's not chaotic. Uh, it's, it may be, it might look chaotic, but it's all, all with specific reasons, right? Which is the the least stressful and the most efficient way to clear the angles and switch back and forth between two angles sometimes. This is something he'll do consistently. He doesn't make it up every time he comes outside. So that's stuff you should be watching for in demos, especially when it comes to entry pathing, the height of the angles that they hold. You know, th this is, Counter-Strike is a game of, of subtlety. Uh, it's a game of subtlety and mastery, right? The reason why it's so like so many CS pros can go pros in other games, but like not the other way around is because this is, it, this is a game that takes so long to master. And the only difference is between the top players are their level of mastery, right? There's not really any skipping it. There's the game is too easy to pick up, um, uh, to explain why, uh, why top players can be so, you know, leaps and bounds ahead of each other. It's, uh, a game of a lot of nuance and subtlety and that's what sometimes i mean that's what makes the game very digestible to watch but also makes the game uh, very interesting to learn and see and why sometimes you know we're watching these demos and it's kind of a quiet experience <coughs> there is um there's a, a lot of depth to, to what's going on but um a lot of it at the same time is it's, it's very like tiny advantages that compound uh, over the course of a round that result in, you know, outstanding performances, outstanding years, 
you know, as we're talking about. It's an amazing, amazing achievement to be in the top 20. To be anywhere close to it, right? Not even just to be in like some specific order uh, and to achieve to be like top five versus top six. Man, they're both incredible achievements. So two on two situation. And we've got the crossfire with uh, control of control. This is the ideal position I'd say for the CTs. You can see how hard this is because you're both watching one side of ramp and electronic can make sure that they don't cross through control room. Um, and I guess they might be out already. So I think we're seeing electronic about to run into one inside the control room, I think. Yes, just just in time. Poison misses a shot. Electronic catches them off guard with that reposition and we move on forward. We haven't had too many, I mean, basically outside's been shut down and controlled uh, a number of rounds here from uh, what we've seen. Flame Map's not been able to get through. Um, they've, they've, they've out, he's out fragged him. The only time he got outplayed was the one time they flashed him. And that was one of the coolest rounds we saw where <laughs> he was like so ready for it and had the pre-aim and everything. He almost got the kills blind. Like that was one of the coolest rounds. That was the only round they even outplayed him. So we'll have him hold up in the same position and we'll see if there's a new kind of pressure that comes this way oh i think he actually gets flashed out sorry I, I kind of went really far past it when you lose your duel like that it's such a bad situation you know another fight's coming if that player repeats you and makes a mistake right letting your team letting his teammate fight there is how to win it so yep there's an awkward spot it overextends a bit and doesn't isn't able to fall back from there We're getting these same smokes outside. He's always got some level of vision on what can be at the cross. You know, by that same token, you are always playing on, you know, limited, limited information. Oh my, oh my God. Did you see that? That is, that's, that's it. That's it. That's why the flashes of the smokes are not really walls and why they don't really matter if you're prepared. That was just pure. That was, you know, the smokes weren't even on his screen, right? That was him lining up an angle and using a sound cue and knowing what was coming, right? That's a preparation kill right there. That was disgusting stuff. There's nothing that config could have done to stop that from his angle. He obviously could not see electronic at all. And I, I okay, right when I hit skip, he gets a kill in heaven. And now we're into the last round of the half. <clears throat> that was really cool. And of course, flamey has got to show him why. He's on the team. He's got this 4K at the ramp, and that is the end of the demo. There's a couple of cool rounds in there. Very strong match overall. And uh, yeah, so I think uh, I think uh, yeah, let's uh, let's keep going. There's a, a few more games to show, and uh, I really I really like the list so far. I think it makes sense, and hopefully, when we fill out the top ten, top ten, we're not going to be too far off. But um, yes, there's still a couple of players. I'm sure some people are like expecting to see that they're that are probably coming. Um, hope you enjoyed that one, and I'll see you again tomorrow for another demo.